providing the, the microphone because it makes such a difference when there's so many of you gathered here. It's the first time ever that we're gathered to see a park created by men and to be able to see events and concerts and things made by men, but only um, I suppose the tent moss could make such a beautiful web. And we hear about birds as well making this, no matter how good people are and at making things, only nature can make certain things. And um, we're delighted to have with us today Kathy Milley, who is um, our local wildlife ranger, and she's going to tell us all about this new um, tent moss. Thank you. Thank you. to lay its eggs here in, in this place. And there's a couple of little offshoot um, populations further up the road as well. And I've looked at those and there are spindle plants there as well. And not in between. So that so it's very much tied in with the spindle plant. And um, I'm sure later you can you can you can look more closely at it. So what we so what has, what has already happened is that the moth has come along and laid eggs on uh, the leaves of the plant. Now these eggs have hatched into caterpillars, and that's the stage that it's at now. So the next stage in the life cycle of the uh, moth is that the caterpillars will pupate. In other words, they will build a cocoon of uh, webbing, which is what you see here, around them, and you see it. So large simply because there are so many of them here all together. Because generally, uh, moths are you know, fairly solitary animals and um, uh, they hide their cocoons, um, individual cocoons, underneath leaves of vegetation, leaves of trees, uh, on vegetation in hedgerows and so on. And uh, so therefore, they're never very obvious. And this is obviously really very obvious because there are just so many of them there all at the moment. So the next thing will be that the uh, the, the uh, caterpillars will develop into pupae uh, encased in this uh, sort of webbing, webbing material, and then the moth will emerge eventually. I don't know how long that will take, but that's that's the process. That's really what happens with all uh, uh, of the butterfly and moth family. The question is that it is the moth um, found in this part of the park? And the answer to that question is yes, it is, yeah. It's, it's a fairly widespread species, but um, it's patchily distributed, you know, it's not, not very evenly distributed, because its uh, food plant spindle is thinly distributed, and it only occurs, uh, or rather it will only bleed uh, in areas where that plant is, because it needs that plant to, to, to feed on. Okay, thanks very much. And the web catch flies as well. Um, I don't think the web can catch flies. Um, it, 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 if you touch it, it's not actually a kind of a sticky um, web. It's very strong, though. And the other question was how long. And I don't know the, how, how long will it be before the, the, the moths will, uh, will hatch. But it could be a couple of, something like a couple of weeks anyway. Um, no, it won't be. It will only spread to the extent of uh, where the plant is, where the spindle plant is. Now, I've already mentioned there are a few little offshoots, and I suppose you could say that is spread, you know, because a few days ago it was only down here in this uh, big patch, and now there are two smaller patches. So if there are 
there's more of that plant around this area, it could, they could spread out to those areas. But, um, uh, in fact, they look, they look quite closely at the, um, at the edge, if you walk right beside it, you'll see that the leaves of the spindle plant are all eaten out, but they haven't touched the um, leaves of other plants, such as hawthorn or ivy or blackthorn. Some people have asked me, you know, is it going to damage, say, for example, crops like agricultural crops? And the answer to that is no, it won't, because it only feeds on the one plant species. And of course, it is only the caterpillar that feeds when the moths um, uh, emerge and fly off. They don't feed anymore. They, their only purpose in life thereafter is to lay the next generation of eggs again. No, they do, do they eat insects? Is the question. No, they don't. They just eat plant material. And it is just the caterpillar that feeds, not the moth itself. The, 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 the moth, um, the species has four stages of development. It is the eggs, the caterpillar, the pupae, and then the adult moth. And the only stage at which feeding takes place is when it's in the caterpillar stage. Why is it called tank moth? Well, it, it's not actually, it's called ermine moth, and the reason for that is because the moth is white, uh, the yeah. adult moth is white. There are such things as tent moths, but they don't occur here in Ireland. But you know, these have formed uh, a wedding that looks a bit like a tent, yeah. but it, it, strictly speaking, it's not a tent moth. <coughs> Oh, do they have enemies? Of course they do, yeah. Um, they have lots of enemies, in fact. Um, moths fly by night. Most moths fly by night. Not all of them. Some, some of them are day fly as well. And um, at night, uh, bats would be uh, uh, predators of them. And indeed, birds as well. Um, around us, for example, uh, uh, swallows, swifts, martins, uh, other insects, feeding birds would be out as well. Yeah. So they do. And of course, the caterpillars would be taken by uh, a whole range of birds that are breeding now, such as the kid family, robins, wrens, ducks, blackbirds, song turtles, a whole host of species that uh, would, would, would feed on the caterpillars now at the stage. And also, people get worried when they see such an enormous number of um, uh, these caterpillars on the edge. But of course, what, what you really should think about though is the enormous number of those that will never reach um, adulthood um, because they will be uh, eaten up by lots and lots of birds um, and lots of them will die for other reasons, you know, for um, there are numerous mortality factors that will take a toll on them. So the number that will actually survive will, actually, will be quite small. Uh, at the end of the at the end of the season, so uh, it doesn't mean that the whole place is going to be covered with these uh, with these uh, 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 web-like structures next year. In fact, there might be none here next year at all. That would be my guess. Yes, the cocoon. Yeah, the web is actually a cocoon. Only in this case, um, generally speaking, with moth, it's an individual cocoon around each individual caterpillar. Here, in this case, it's a kind of how do they stay on the web? Oh, <laughs> they're very well able to, to hold on to, to uh, you know, they have hooked um, feet, many, many insects have hooked feet or they have suction pads on their feet and that, that's how, that's how Insects are able to climb up uh, vertical, uh, shiny uh, surfaces. And so Pat's always a source of information for us. And so as a school and the community, we thank him. And we thank him especially for coming here today and sharing his expertise with us. So thank you, Pat.